You will find many bizarre stories when searching for the validation of the metaphysical and supernatural in this world. If you have some experience with this, you should be able to easily categorize them as obvious hoaxes and true reports of events that really happened. But what I'm going to present here falls under the third category of stories that are very difficult to wrap your head around. In 2014, very strange pictures and videos started circulating on the internet showing bodies of mythical creatures known to us only from fairy tales and old legends. In 2016, mainstream media got interested in these bizarre looking entities and the whole world started wondering what it is that we're dealing with here. It quickly turned out that these pictures are showing only a small fraction of a huge collection of artifacts coming from a basement of a house in the middle of London that belonged to a strange man called Thomas Marilyn. Before we continue, I want to ask you to sponsor this channel so that I can show you more of these stories. You can donate by using PayPal, Cash App, Bank or Cryptocurrency Transfer or join Patreon or Subscribestar. You can schedule a donation funded chat with me or buy merchandise. All links in the video description. As always, your help is needed and much appreciated. Thank you. The story goes that Thomas was born in 1782 and was an introverted professor and later a lord who spent most of his life in the basement of a London house without having much contact with anyone. He became famous for collecting specimens of unknown animal and humanoid species not known to earthly science. Even though he wasn't leaving his house, it was assumed that he must have traveled extensively to find these artifacts. Although not a part of any scientific community, he was respected and highly regarded by the biggest names of his times. Eventually, he started showing his collection to the world and the exposition was considered to be so shocking that he was accused of practicing dark magic and eventually fell out of favor with the scientific world. Disrespected and ridiculed, he disappeared back into his basement and by the end of the century was presumed dead. That was until in 1942 a man who claimed to be Thomas and looking like him donated the very same house to a London orphanage under the condition that the basement was never to be unsealed by anyone. The man looked not older than 45 years old and claimed to be Thomas, yet he should have been at least 160 years old by then. It was the last time anyone had seen him and in 1960s the orphanage shut down and the history of Thomas was forgotten. In 2006, when the building's foundations were inspected before planned demolition, accidentally, behind two brick walls, the door to the basement was discovered. Inside, thousands of smaller and larger crates filled with specimens, artifacts, devices, paintings and diaries were found. The reason this was a shocking discovery is that among the objects were bodies of goblins, elves, fairies, vampires, dragons, mermaids and werewolves never seen by anyone before. A trust was found so that the crates can be analyzed and described and that was when a young man named Alex was hired. He is the one who showed this collection to the world a few years later. But this story is much more interesting it would appear. It turned out that some of the skin cells from these creatures are more than 2000 years old and were brought back to life from dormant state, but their DNA is unlike anything scientists have ever seen. Even more interestingly, Thomas's notes are filled with esoteric ideologies, quantum mechanics, time travel, DNA science and things that no one should have known about two centuries ago. His drawings depict bodies of what we today call grey aliens. In fact, many of these objects look as if they were taken straight from a Hollywood prop archive. Thomas also mentions a sentient artifact called the alabast. It is described as a foot-long horn made of glass-like substance making sounds similar to human voice. This object might have something to do with the long lifespan of the crazy professor, but as it appears, it was never found in the collection. But that's not the end of all the strangeness. I've been interested in it for a few years now and it seems that the story behind these elves and fairies changed recently. I have to rely on my memory here but I remember seeing these pictures for the first time and there are some things that I need to tell you about. But first, let's think if all of this is actually true as any skeptical researcher would do and let's look for any inconsistencies that would allow us to discredit the whole thing as a hoax. After all, this is a weird story that feels like it is almost impossible to be real. And the first thing that made me question it is that Thomas Merlin was born in the north of England in a town called Hellingshire. Because I live in the north of England, I can tell you that there is no Hellingshire. It's obviously a fake name. 
The interesting thing is that additional biographical elements appeared recently online, and I don't remember Life of Thomas being described in such detail. But it could be just my bad memory. Another thing that I noticed is that when I read about this discovery years ago, it was reported that there were actually thousands of crates, but if you read the report now, it talks only about hundreds with thousands of objects in them. Also, a lot of new connections to famous people were made that previously were not listed, as if someone was trying to validate this story. But the biggest change is what Thomas was doing throughout his life in the house, and that little detail is the reason why I'm making this video. When I read about this story years ago, it said that Thomas never left the house for almost 40 years, yet today we can read that Thomas was actually traveling around the world collecting these bodies. Why is it important? Because it feels like new elements were added to the story that would discredit it or make it look like a cheaply concocted hoax. This is a very common method used by government agencies and if you want to learn how it works, read about the Roswell UFO crash and the weather balloon theory. It's always the same method where an incredibly complex explanation is brushed off and replaced by a ridiculously naive and primitive debunking attempt and is quickly picked up and spread by media. It feels like this is one of these cases because if you look up anything on these London artifacts, you'll find plenty of articles dismissing and ridiculing the whole thing. But I remember reading about the exact number of items that allowed me to multiply 40 years of Thomas living in the basement and the number of objects that were found and although I don't remember the exact numbers, I remember that it amounted to him working day and night creating an object every five days. Yet I can't find this information anymore for some reason. He would have had to work day and night for 40 years to produce just the specimens, not to mention all the drawings, paintings, descriptions, devices and all other objects that were also found in the basement. So that theory makes absolutely no sense. Keep in mind, we're talking about 18th century technology and tools. Now, the interesting thing is that I remember clearly that he described in the notes his inner dimensional travels and how he was collecting these artifacts in the extraterrestrial realms. This information is also nowhere to be found now. The main argument against this being a true story is that Alex, apparently an artist, created all these artifacts himself. But that doesn't explain how a 20-something kid is not only an artist, but also a sculptor, biologist, painter, designer, engineer, taxidermist, and a skilled craftsman who, despite his young age in a fairly short period of time, was capable of creating hundreds of realistically looking animal bodies, skeletons, drawings and devices. These bodies are too detailed and too small sometimes to be fake, especially that their faces show emotions and in some cases you can observe visible rigor mortis, a stage in which limbs of the corpse stiffen under the influence of chemical changes in the muscles. Very difficult, if not impossible, to reproduce artificially. I've seen a lot of hoaxes, but if this story is not real, in my opinion, this has to be the biggest and most elaborate fakery in human history that must have involved huge teams of highly skilled people to pull it off. The question is also, why all the effort? Because despite the name Maryland Cryptid Museum, there is no actual museum open to public that could somehow justify the time, money and energy required to create thousands of these artifacts visible in the pictures. It seems like there isn't anyone who would benefit from it. And I was able to confirm that, in fact, there was a boys' orphanage in London that shut down in the 60s. We also need to take into account another story that talks about a 6-inch alien body found in Chile, very similar to the ones discovered in the basement. That finding was so important that there was even a documentary made about it called Sirius. The humanoid specimen in question was DNA tested, x-rayed and CT scanned and was proven to be in fact extraterrestrial. In that case, also a very similar primitive misinformation campaign was launched trying to explain that artifact to be a skeleton of a human. An adult 6-inch human. Yes. In one of my previous videos, called Lies Under Your Feet, I talk about a map from 434 years ago that shows all of these creatures actually to exist. Watch that video if you want to learn more. Also, most of the viewers of this channel understand that there are other dimensions and even FBI and CIA confirmed their existence in their documents and I did make a video about that too. We also need to remember that psychonauts and people who come back from the spiritual world after near-death experiences confirm the existence of other realities that are inhabited by completely different organisms than we find on Earth. 
If these artifacts are real and the story surrounding them is true, the implications for our science are enormous. If we take all of the above into account and the mainstream media efforts to dismiss this seemingly unbelievable story, it is likely that Professor Thomas Theodore Marilyn actually knew a method of traveling between dimensions. If you would like to have a look at all of the pictures yourself, go to the website alexcf.com and see for yourself what they contain. I will continue exploring the metaphysical discoveries, bringing you more of these findings so that once and for all we can understand what the nature of our reality is. If you want to help me with this, please sponsor this channel by donating or by joining one of the subscription services. If you want to talk about this, schedule a chat with me or buy merchandise. All links in the video description. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. Like this video and share it with everyone you care about. For merchandise, go to shop.b434.com. Leave your email address at news.b434.com. Visit the website of the artist and the musician I featured here. For more info or contact, visit b434.com and join 434 social media on YouTube, Facebook, BitChute, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, Telegram, VK, TikTok, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Dailymotion, and a few other ones you can see on the screen now. All links in the video description at b434.com.